actually, when uh, I just want to start off by saying I'm a Directors Guild member and a Screen Actors Guild member, but not because I aspire to act. I just aspire to get paid when someone says, hey, we need your hands or we need your legs walking by there. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, uh, when Sylvie and I first started talking about this, she said, just tell a story. People love stories. So actually, I'm going to tell a story uh, uh, from when I was a second assistant director years ago that kind of might illustrate a little bit what it's like to make a movie. And unfortunately, it's not a story about Philadelphia, and it's not a Night Shyamalan story, even though I've worked on a lot of his movies, but it, uh, it's from the movie Avalon, which I shot in Baltimore in 1989. <clears throat> and it's a great film about a family that emigrates to Baltimore from Eastern Europe and uh, kind of story how a family grows up and grows apart once they get to, uh, to the States. And it takes place in, uh, I counted up, 23 different time periods over a span of uh, 54 years. And um, I learned on this film there's two types of assistant directors. Uh, those who scream and then the rest of us. And um, my, my boss on Avalon was a screamer. If he walked in right now, I think I would just head that way. Um, but um, one of the responsibilities of a uh, assistant director uh, early on is to formulate the schedule of the movie, try to figure out the most economical way to shoot the movie, the most efficient way to shoot it. And, um, you know, in a lot of respects, we also control the budget. And I guess Missy will talk a little more about that. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into making the schedule, but one of the basic philosophies is... Uh, is how you're going to approach it. And uh, there's two kinds of ADs when it comes to that. Uh, ones like me, who like to start off really easy and, and uh, do the easiest stuff first. And then when you get into week two and week three and week four, you can do the hard stuff. Uh, the other kind is like my screamer friend, who thinks the, the smartest way to go is to do the most difficult day of production on the first day of production. Then you can concentrate all your pre-production on day one. And if day one works out, the rest of the schedule will go fine. So um, on Avalon, he thought it would be a good idea to make the first day of production the most difficult day of production. And uh, the scene we were shooting that day was supposed to be uh, during a heat wave in 1949. And the family's having a family meeting in a, in a row house in Baltimore. Everybody's sweltering. And uh, one of the characters is hallucinating and thinks she sees an elephant going by outside the window. And then another one. But then the family realizes actually the circus has come to town. And they rush outside, and you see much of this through the eyes of uh, the little character, Elijah Wood, who was like eight at the time. And actually, I think the street we were on was really the street that Barry Levinson lived on back in the, the 40s. But from a logistical standpoint, it's madness. Uh, so in order to pull off the scene, we have a huge ensemble cast. The call sheet was like three feet long because we had all these various family members. We had hundreds of extras, a lot of minors, all in period costume, and they're all sweltering. Um, period hairdos, period cars, plus the circus is coming to town. So we got bearded ladies and fire breathers and clowns and, uh, and elephants. But also the director wanted to see lions and tigers and maybe a bear coming down the street in, the, in these, these horse-drawn circus carriages. Well, the first day of production is always kind of confusing. You don't know what the, uh, we had multiple cameras. Nobody knew what the B camera operator looked like. No, no one knew what the A camera operator looked like. Um, nobody knew what the leads of the movies looked like. You know, it was, it was day one. You're kind of confused with everything. But as a second AD, one of my responsibilities was to give everybody a call time. So the night before, we're making sure everybody knows what and where and when we're doing the next day. And we realize no one's called the animal people. And usually that comes under the um, auspices of the prop master. So we got in touch with the prop master. said, oh, no problem. They'll be there. They're coming down from New York. They're staying in a hotel outside of town. They'll be there tomorrow. Don't worry about it. But I was still concerned. And uh, I even drove to the hotel where they were supposed to be, figuring I'd see elephants and lions and stuff and make sure everything was OK. But I didn't see him. But called the prop master. He said, no problem. They're pros. They'll be there. So next day, before dawn, we get there. No animals. Actually, we had the elephants. We had some camels. But no lions, no tigers, no bear. 
Oh my. As it turns out, the, the truck with the animals broke down somewhere on the Jersey Turnpike the night before, and they were still, they were still there, but the prop master said, don't worry, they'll be here. So we decided to keep shooting, and we did this whole circus comes to town. We just avoided seeing that the cages were empty, figuring when the animals got there, we'd put them in, get a shot of them, and we'd be fine. So the day goes pretty well, con considering it's a logistical nightmare. And uh, we break for lunch, no lions. Uh, late in the afternoon, the animals finally arrive. And this first AD, kind of raucous demeanor, screamer, barks at me on the walkie-talkie and, Russ, get those animals out here right away. We're losing the light. Famous battle cry on a set. So I run back to the parking lot and I'm trying to coax the trainers into coaxing the animals out of their broken down truck and into these period uh, cages. And uh, what we didn't count on is they, uh, they weren't really in the mood to perform. They'd just been cooped up in this truck for 24 hours. They didn't really want to get in the period uh, circus things and march down the street. So they kind of refused to budge. And uh, my walkie-talkie is just screaming. I just got to, as far away from me as I can. Then the rest of the story gets a little fuzzy because I still picture myself pushing on the hind quarter of a lion <laughs> with my hand in the cage, just trying to get into the, the period thing to get it out there. And the trainer looks at me and says, what are you, you're going to get your hand bitten off. And I said, if I don't get these animals out there, the first AD is going to bite my head off. So, so I let him decide which appendage was more, more important. So I survived that day one. And actually, it's a classic movie, and I love it. And I just watched part of it last night. And when I watched it last night, I realized that whole sequence was less than two minutes. And, uh, and ironically, you never see a lion or a tiger <laughs> or a bear. And I guess I have to blame that on the editor because we shot him. So that's a little, little bit of what it's like on the, on the set, and trying to keep it all going. And now to talk more about pre-production, I'd like to introduce Missy Moyer. Sorry, I'm supposed to write for, read it verbatim. <laughs> uh, a pro who knows how to get the job done. You can't do better than Missy.